This LOS is calculate and explain how inflation and deflation of inventory costs affect the financial statements and ratios of companies that use different inventory valuation methods. Periodic versus perpetual inventory systems. Companies typically record charges to inventory using either a periodic inventory system or a perpetual inventory system. Under a periodic inventory system, inventory values and costs of sales are determined at the end of an accounting period. Purchases are recorded in a purchases account. The total of purchases and beginning inventory is the amount of goods available for sale during the period. The ending inventory amount is subtracted from the goods available for sale to arrive at the cost of sales. The quantity of goods and ending inventory is usually obtained or verified through a physical count of the units in inventory. So again, we're going to use our trustee T accounts here. The opening balances plus purchases minus closing balance equals the cost of sales. Under a perpetual inventory system, inventory values and cost of sales are continuously updated to reflect purchases and sales. Continuing with periodic versus perpetual inventory systems, under either system, the allocation of goods available for sale to cost of sales and ending inventory is the same if the inventory valuation method used is either specific identification or FIFO. This is, generally, uh, this is not generally true for the weighted average cost method. Under the LIFO method, the periodic and perpetual inventory systems will generally result in different allocations to cost of sales and ending inventory. Under either a perpetual or periodic inventory system, the use of the LIFO method will generally result in significantly different allocations to cost of sales and ending inventory compared to other inventory valuation methods. When inventory costs are increasing and inventory unit levels are stable or increasing, using the LIFO method will result in higher cost of sales and lower inventory carrying amounts than using the FIFO method. The higher cost of sales under LIFO will result in lower gross profit, operating income, income before taxes, and, and net income. Income taxes will be lower under LIFO, causing the company's net operating cash flow to be higher. On the balance sheet, the lower inventory carrying amount will res result in lower reported current assets, working capital, and total assets. Analysts must carefully assess the financial statement implications of the choice of inventory valuation method when comparing companies that use the LIFO method with companies that use the FIFO method. So I'm using the same example that I used in a previous LOS with regards to the FIFO and the LIFO, but I changed it here. I uh, reversed the prices. So in this case now, we have the rising prices. Uh, so you can see that we initially bought at 90 and then at 100 and then at 110. Recall this example, uh, we were buying 600 kilograms of soap and we sold 520,000 kilograms. So regardless of our inventory method, we're always going to have the same amount of units in ending inventory. What's going to be different is our cost of goods sold. Our sales is always going to be the same, regardless of inventory method. We sold 520,000 kilograms of soap at 241 per kilogram. That's 124,800,000. So our revenue is always going to be the same, but then depending on our inventory method, our cost of goods sold, and therefore our ending inventory is going to be different, okay? So in this case, I changed the prices so that they're rising. We initially buy 100,000 kilograms at 90, 200,000 kilograms at 100, and then 300,000 kilograms at 110. So a quick review, with our FIFO, it's first in, first out. So we start from the top and our, we work our way down. That means the 100,000 is sold, 200,000 is sold uh, kilograms, and 220,000 from the last batch. So we know 80,000 is uh, from the last batch that's still sitting in inventory, first in, first out. So what's remaining is the most recent purchases. So 80,000 times 110, our ending inventory is going to be 8.8 .8 million, okay? And in this case, um, uh, regardless, again, regardless of inventory me method, the amount of our purchases, our cost of goods available for sale, is always going to be the same. And in this example, it's a little bit higher because, of course, we were buying at the higher prices, the bigger quantity at the end, okay? Uh, so now we can see, if we stick to the, the FIFO method, 
uh, the 90 times 100,000, uh, uh, sorry, 90 times 100 is gone, so 9 million. 100 times, um, uh, uh, 200,000 times 110 is, uh, 100 is gone, equals the 20 million. And 200, 220,000 times the 110, 24 million, 200,000. So our cost of goods sold, that's our cost of goods sold, debit cost of goods sold, credit inventory, is 53 million, 200,000. Now, if we skip down here to the LIFO, last in, first out, last in, first out, we start from the bottom and we work our way back up, okay? So this 300,000 is gone, okay? This 200,000 is gone. That means we had 20,000 sold from the first purchase, and that means that 80,000 that's sitting in inventory because it's last in, first out, is from our earlier purchases, so it's the lower cost inventory. So we can see 80,000 times 90 is gonna be 7.2 million. So uh, you can quickly see here that our ending inventory under LIFO is less and our cost of goods sold is more because that th we're, we're starting from the bottom working our way up. That 300,000 times 110 is gone. 33 million, the 20,000, uh, sorry, the 20 million is the same, but here's the difference. Under FIFO, first in, first out, all that inventory is sold at 90, but here only 20,000 units are sold at 90 and the 80,000 is sitting in inventory, okay? So that, that's, that's uh, uh, so we can see the cost of goods sold is higher. You can see 54,800. The cost of goods sold is higher under the FIFO method and our ending inventory is lower. Okay, carrying on here with the weighted average cost when the um, inventory prices are rising. So you can see we changed the example. So we're buying 100,000 kilograms at 90, 200,000 kilograms at 100, and 300,000 kilograms at 110. So our purchases, our cost of goods available for sale was 62 million. We take that 62 million, we divide it by the 600,000, we get 103.33. And remember, we sold 520,000 kilograms. So 520,000 uh, kilograms times 103.33 is going to give us 53,733,333. And what happens in this case is that the cost of goods sold it falls in between the FIFO. I brought this from the previous slide. Our cost of goods sold under FIFO when prices was rising was 53,200,000. And under LIFO, was 54,800,000. So again, when prices are rising, LIFO has the higher cost of goods sold, lower inventory than FIFO, and weighted average falls in the middle. So here's this chart again, we saw it before. We're gonna convert the LIFO to FIFO when the prices are rising. So we just saw from the previous slide, when prices are rising, the LIFO is gonna have the co higher cost of goods sold, so it's gonna have the lower inventory. And then this chart is just putting into words what those paragraphs had on the first slide. The higher cost of goods sold is gonna be lower gross profit, lower earnings before tax, lower taxes, because there's lower taxes, you're gonna have a higher cash flow from operations, okay? And lower net income. And because our cost of goods sold is higher, we're gonna have the lower inventory, which means lower working capital. And because of lower net income, we're gonna have lower retained earnings. Okay, so if we look at the FIFO method, if we're gonna convert from LIFO to FIFO, how do we do it when prices are rising? We need the cost of goods sold is lower, so we're gonna take the cost of goods sold under the LIFO method, and we're gonna uh, subtract the increase in the LIFO reserve. Now again, we're gonna see this in another LOS, but I just put it in here as a bit of a preview. So therefore, as you can see, lower cost of goods sold, obviously higher gross profit, higher earnings before tax, higher taxes, so a lower cash flow from operations, okay? And you're gonna have higher net income. Again, to convert, you're gonna take the uh, LIFO, uh, net income from the LIFO method, we're gonna add the increase in the LIFO reserve times one minus the tax rate, okay? We have to make some adjustments. Now on the balance sheet, your inventory is higher using the FIFO, it's the LIFO method plus the LIFO reserve, okay, to do the conversion. But again, we're going to see that uh, in more detail in the later LOS. So because I have higher inventory, I'm going to have higher working capital, higher retained earnings. And again, there's an adjustment that you can make. It's the LIFO method plus the LIFO reserve times 
one minus the tax rate. So again, that's the LIFO to FIFO when price inventory prices are rising. So just using the example now straight from the text, we can see this is when prices was de are decreasing, and we looked at this example before, okay? So if you've been uh, following all the LOS for the inventory reading, uh, this is nothing new. So a quick review, we purchased 600,000 kilograms, we sold 520,000 kilograms. In this scenario, the prices were on our inventory purchase was, was uh, falling. So under the FIFO, we have a balance of 80,000 kilograms. What's left there, first in, uh, first out. So those are, the, the 100,000 is gone, the 200,000 gone. 220,000 kilograms from the last purchase are gone, which is leaving 80,000 from the last purchase. So 80,000 times 90, our ending inventory is 7.2 uh, million. Our purchases, again, are uh, never change under any method. In this case, it was 58 million. Uh, uh, when we bought 100,000 times 110, 200,000 times 100, 300,000 times 90, it equals 58 million, okay? So under FIFO, quick review, 80,000. What's that? Those are the la first and first out. So it's the last units, our most recent purchases at the highest price. So you can see our cost of goods sold in this case was 50,800,000. If we move to the LIFO, last in, first out, we start from the bottom and we work our way up. So we know that we've got 80,000 of our uh, old units sitting in inventory. So 80,000 um, are still sitting there. 80,000 times 110, we're going to have, and these are the more expensive items, so we're going to have the higher inventory value of 8.8 .8 million. Cost of goods available for sale is the same at 58. So in this case, we have the lower um, cost of goods sold. So when, when uh, prices are falling, using the LIFO method is going to give you the lower cost of goods sold and the higher inventory value. So a quick look at the weighted average method in this scenario where the prices uh, for inventory purchases are decreasing. Again, we purchased 600,000 kilograms. The cost was 58 million. So 58 million divided by 600,000. We have 96.67 times the 520,000 that we sold is gonna equal our 5266.67. So you can see that falls in, I cut this from the previous slide as well. Uh, when prices are, rise, uh, are, are falling, the LIFO method is going to give us the lower cost of goods sold, the higher inventory, and FIFO is going to give us the highest cost of goods sold and the lowest inventory, and once again, weighted average is going to fall in the middle. So we could see when prices were increasing, weighted average gave us the middle value, and when prices were falling, weighted average also gave us the middle value. So this is the same chart, but it's when prices are falling. So what did I did? I just changed the uh, labelings of the columns. So in this case, as we saw, FIFO has the higher cost of goods sold and the lower inventory, so everything's the opposite. But I took off the formulas for adjusting from the LIFO to FIFO because that was uh, for when prices were rising, okay? So it's the same story here with regards to the different ratios and the impact. So we'll just finish this LOS with a quick practice question. A company's information from its first year of operations is as follows. Uh, the opening inventory was zero. They did a purchase of 1,000 units at 2250 New Zealand dollars per unit. Purchase number two, 800 units at 25. And purchase number three, 400 units at 2550. They sold 1,700 units at 40. So using a periodic inventory system and the weighted average method, the ending inventory value is closest to A. 11,975, B, 12,165, or C, 12,700. Okay, a fairly easy question. Uh, we're going to add up our purchases. And uh, so we saw we bought 1,000 times 2,250 equals 22,500. 800 times 25, 20,000. 400 times 2,550, 10,200. So we add up the number of units, 2,200, and we add up the dollar value, 52,700. And we do 52,700 uh, divided by the number of units. And we've got our average uh, cost, which is 2395. And therefore, we know that uh, we bought 2,200 units and we sold 1,700 units. So we had 500 units left. 500 units times the 2395, our ending inventory is 11,975. So the correct answer is A. Uh, fairly easy, not too bad, fairly mechanical. 
Again, if uh, you need more practice on the inventory, what I would do in this case when I was studying is I say, okay, I look at this question. What if I did it as LIFO? And what if I did it as FIFO? What would be my ending inventory and my cost of goods sold in those cases? And just run through the calculations uh, very quickly. So last in, first up, we'd work from our from the bottom up, and for first in, first out, we'd work from our from the uh, top down. So just very quickly on that, we know that we have 500 units left in inventory. So if it's last in, first out, um, my inventory is going to be 500 of the old units still remaining at 2250. If it's last in, uh, sorry, if it's first in, first out. I know that I'm going to have 400 units at 2550 and 100 units at 25 left. So as you go through the practice, that's why I sort of like the T accounts, you know, with my units on the left hand side and my dollars on the right hand side, as I've shown you, I've used. But also, if it's just asking, for example, the cost of goods sold, you should be fairly easy at uh, working from the bottom up or the top down, depending on the method. Uh, fairly mechanical, fairly easy math. It just takes a little bit of practice. Speed is a skill, skill gets rewarded. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.